Hi there, my name is Joseph. I'm part of Queen City Law's Property and Disputes team. Today we're here to talk about different types of property in New Zealand. Whether you're looking to buy your first home or would like to own real estate in the future, finding the right property type and the right property estate will significantly impact both the lifestyle and investment potential. In order to gauge what type of property estate or title might be most suitable for your needs, it's important to first identify what property types exist in New Zealand. The main types of real estate properties typically fall under either residential, commercial or rural. Uh, firstly, we have residential real estate. Um, typically, these categories include freehold homes, apartments, flats, units and townhouses. Uh, vacant land and retirement villages. Freehold homes and properties um, are the most common in New Zealand. They're usually single family homes or uh, multi-unit dwellings owned outright by the title holder or the homeowner. Uh, next, we have apartments and flats. These are multi-unit buildings where each unit is privately owned and these range from small apartment complexes to high rises in the city. Units and townhouses are attached or semi-attached homes that share communal uh, areas and may be governed by a body corporate or a incorporated society. Vacant land refers to land without any buildings and structures and may have been purchased for development purposes. Finally, we have retirement villages. These are housing developments specifically designed for retirees uh, and often featuring community facilities and other services. Next, we have commercial real estate. Commercial real estate is typically comprised of office buildings, retail spaces, industrial properties, and then properties for hospitality and tourism and specialized commercial properties. Firstly, we have office buildings. These are properties used for professional offices, businesses, or corporate headquarters. Secondly, we have retail spaces. Um, which are commercial properties used for your general retail stores, uh, shops and shopping centers. Thirdly, we have industrial properties, which include warehouses, uh, factories and manufacturing facilities. Properties that relate to hospitality and tourism include hotels, motels and other tourist accommodation. As for specialized commercial properties, these are designed for specific purposes such as medical centers, uh, educational facilities and entertainment venues. Finally, in this video today we'll cover rural real estate which encompasses farms, lifestyle blocks, forestry land, horticultural land and then rural residential properties. Firstly, farms. Farms are agricultural land used for various types Types of farming. Next we have lifestyle blocks which are rural properties that combine productive land and then also have a residential component. Forestry land refers to land utilized for commercial forestry purposes such as timber production. Next we have horticultural land. This is the type of land used for fruit, vegetable or viticultural purposes. Finally we have rural residential properties. These properties are simply rural properties uh, with residential components that are usually found in scenic or more remote areas of New Zealand. Uh, now that we've covered the types of real estate properties and various subtypes. Next, it's important to consider what estates or titles exist because that will determine your rights and your obligations in New Zealand. In New Zealand real estate, the notion of estates, which is often referred to as the title on the property, involves different types of uh, legal interests and rights which individuals or entities that own that property can have. The main types of estates or titles in New Zealand are the following. You have fee simple or freehold estates, then you have leasehold estates, um, and then cross leases and unit titles. Firstly, uh, fee simple or freehold estates mean that the person who uh, is on the title is the owner of both the land and the building that sits on that land. This is the most common form of ownership in New Zealand and is the most complete form of ownership. The advantages for fee simple or freehold estates are that there is no annual ground rent. You are, as the owner, you would be solely responsible for the property and then you have the absolute right to use, sell, lease, uh, or bequeath the property. Next, we have leasehold estates. In a leasehold estate, you have a lease from the leaseholder or the lessor uh, to a lessee. The lessee will have a right to use the property for a specified duration. This can go anywhere from a few years to 999 years, which is the maximum. Leasehold estates are typical for properties like apartments or flats in urban areas like Auckland, where land may be leased from uh, Maori Land Court or other landowners. Lessees have limited rights compared to freehold owners. However, uh, Leaseholders do have certain responsibilities, um, such as paying maintenance fees, uh, service charges, and also sharing building insurance. Meanwhile, the leaseholder or lessor uh, maintains common areas, such as the uh, external walls, roofs, entrance areas. Um, so while a leasehold title uh, might be ideal for those who are happy uh, to pay an entity like a body corporate uh, or for maintenance purposes, it's worth noting that these extra fees can add up 
uh, making a property with a leasehold title an extra costly investment overall. Next, let's look at cross-lease titles. Cross-lease arrangements involve multiple property owners who each lease their respective share or portion of land uh, from each other. Each property owner holds a leasehold interest in the land and a freehold interest in their own dwelling. In other words, in a cross-lease, you have two interests, a share of the freehold title in common with the other cross-lease holder and a leasehold interest in the specific area or building that you occupy. Cross-leases are also often subject to a set of agreements and conditions that all parties are to follow. Finally, let's take a quick look at unit titles, which are often referred to as strata title or stratum estates. These are common in multi-unit developments, for example, apartments or townhouses. In these circumstances, each unit owner will hold a separate title for their own unit and then shares in the common property, such as a hallway, a garden, uh, shared areas in general. Unit titles are also often managed by body corporates and each owner will pay a share of maintenance fees uh, and management fees. And there we have it. Um, those are the different types of properties and estates in New Zealand. Understanding these rights and responsibilities and restrictions uh, for each type of property is essential uh, to ensure a fully informed purchase decision. Be sure to speak to your lawyer or conveyancer uh, in order to review the record of title before you decide on making a purchase.